Okay, so since we do have on our website lesson on Old Testament reading, which is Isaiah 55, I thought it would be fun to, do, to talk over one theme, which is, I believe, important, but I bet none of you had a Bible study on birthdays, okay, or birthday parties, okay, no, see, okay, I know something. I know something about your life. You never had birthday party Bible study. The reason is, it is important because we do have important birthday parties in the scripture. One of them is actually precedes our gospel reading for today. We will have, if you will flip with me or go with me into Matthew chapter 14, and our reading starts at the verse 13. So Matthew 14, we will be in Matthew actually for a while. You know how our liturgical readings are set up. You know, we basically go walk through one gospel and then we walk through another gospel and so on and so forth. So in Matthew 14, with verse 13, Verse 13 starts, when Jesus heard that, he departed into desolate place, something like that, okay? okay? What did he hear about? Okay, this is always an important question when you go into the text and it says something that it happened after or he heard that, okay? Go back into verse 1. In verse 1, it says the Herod heard it, okay? Now, the question is what Herod heard, and actually Herod heard about Jesus' being opposed by his surrounding, even by his family, and he responded with uh, parables. So when he hears about his ministry, then actually Matthew goes into flashback, because Herod thinks that that's the John the Baptist or John the Baptizer uh, is risen from the dead because he killed him. And then Matthew, as I said, goes into flashback and tells us a story how he, Herod, killed John the Baptizer. Okay? And you know the story. But you probably never paid real close attention to one important detail. It was a party. The daughter of his wife from another marriage danced in front of Herod and pleased him and he said, oh, girl, whatever you want, I'll give it to you. Okay? You know the plot. And she says, okay, I want a head of the John the Baptizer on the platter. He was not really happy with that decision, but he carries on. And you know, John the Baptizer is that. Okay, so the thing is, where did it happen? his birthday party okay he had birthday party Matthew does not go into very much detail of what was going on on the party but if you flip into chapter 6 of Mark it's the same story but he says that actually it was like a big big thing because he invited nobles he invited his chief mans and he invited his generals so being kind of like commander in chief, you know, he invited uh, and, and, and the guy who would rule over a particular territory. He probably invited some Roman uh, nobles who would be associated with like a co-governing of the land because we know that the Israel at that time was under, you know, Roman control or Roman dominance or however you want to say it. You know, so there were... It, it was not like, you know, five, six close buddies, you know, they went to the local pub, you know, kind of like, you know, cheer up and, and things, that, that, that's over. No, no, no. It was like a huge official thing, okay? In his birthday party, he kills a man, okay? He murders the man, basically, okay? That's, that's an important thing, and we, we kind of need to see... Did we see anything like that before? And actually, the truth is, yes, we did. Anybody want to guess where? 
So we'll start with Matthew uh, 14, 1 through um, 13a. Okay? Where did we see bury the party with death before? Any guesses? And when I will tell you, you will say, oh, yeah, because the, the story is so familiar. Trust me, the story is familiar. Think, think, think. Okay? Okay, I'm not going to kill you. <laughs> if we'll go to Genesis. Okay. 40. In Genesis 40, we will find Joseph, okay, in the prison. Okay? He is in the prison for X number of months, years. We don't really know how long. Uh, he was in the prison, and then suddenly, I mean, he was in charge of that prison. The, the whole in prison story for Joseph is grossly usually misunderstood uh just a small spoiler alert um his boss okay you remember why he got into prison why he got into prison I... yeah, yeah 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 okay now the question is did potiphar believe him or not B did believe her or not yeah he believed him he did not believe her the reason, simple reason is, if he would believe her, a slave, who tried to rape master's wife, mm -hmm, he would not be in the prison. He would be in the main square of the main city, and they would torture him first, then painfully, piece by piece, they probably would cut something. I mean, they, they, they knew how to make people miserable and how to make an impression on everybody else so nobody would try to repeat this kind of stuff but to make sure that there would be no public thingy goes on he had to remove him from the house and actually Potiphar is the guy who is in charge of the prison so he placed him in the prison and almost immediately it says that he put him in charge because he knew that the jo who Joseph is and how he could I mean he's a good manager He's a good CEO, you know, he can, he can run stuff, you know, he can do things. So he is in the prison, he's, but prison is still prison. I mean, it's not a, you know, summer cottage, you know, it's kind of not, not the best place in your life. So he is there, he's in charge. Suddenly he has two cellmates. And one of them is a chief cup bearer and another one is a chef, chief baker, okay? When we hear cup bearer and baker, we suddenly think that that's the guys who actually, you know, they fix the dough and stuff like that. No, no, no. Okay. He was what we would call a secretary of agriculture. Okay. He was the guy at the Pharaoh's court who was in charge of the bread supply and, and you know, the, the basically the whole thing about the food. Okay. The cup bearer guy is the chief... Not necessarily the guy who would taste the wine for the Pharaoh in case somebody would want to poison him. It was not really his job. His job was to bring the cup with wine and to help him to go. I mean, when you drink the wine, you kind of like want to enjoy it. And then some genius ideas come into your brain. Okay. So he was basically a main advisor. What? Seriously, in our American thing is, that's probably the, uh, what's the, uh, general secretary, who is in charge of the foreign affairs, okay? Secretary, secretary of state. Secretary of state, yeah, sorry, yeah. So that's the thing, he would, he would talk to, he would talk back, not in the bad sense of the words, he would talk back to Pharaoh to help him solve the matters, because later on, Joseph uses the same wording describing himself when he kind of sets his brothers up and says, you know, you stole the, the cup. You stole my silver cup that I serve Pharaoh with. So he is the main advisor. But the thing is, 
he got these guys into his cell and they have a dream. And in dream, you know the dream, you know, one has the wine and there were like three things and he squeezes and he gives it to Pharaoh and Pharaoh drinks, everything is fine. Then bread, you know, chief baker says, oh, that's kind of like sounds cool. Maybe I can share my dream too. So he has like three layers of uh, uh, three baskets on his head, you know, and uh, then the birds come uh, and uh, basically what Joseph says is, in three days, your head would be lifted up as the, basically the same wording he used for a cup bearer. Your head would be lifted up and then he adds, off you. Okay? And these three days happen to be on Pharaoh's birthday. Okay? Now, verse 20. Okay? Knowing that, Herod, now think back about gospel reading. So knowing that, that Pharaoh here lifted up a head of one of his servants, who Herod resembles? He's a bad Pharaoh, okay? Not converted Pharaoh. What happens is we have another story with birdie, kind of like birdie party. The problem is now with Pharaoh himself. Verse, let's go into 31, verse 1. After two whole years, okay? If you have two whole years, that means we are in the same date two years after. So it's a third, like we had the birdie, one, two, and the third day after that, I mean third uh, instance for the birdie party after two years would be the same thing. The thing is, night before, not the servants, now the Pharaoh has a dream. And you know the dream, okay? Remember, you know, one of them is with seven cows going out off the Nile. Okay, and that's a serious, serious problem. I need uh, blue and I need red and probably I need brown. The reason is why I have those colors is in Egypt, you have two main gods. Nile, one god. What's the second big god in, in, in Egypt? Sun. Yeah. The sun. So the whole world of Egypt is between sun and the Nile. So they are in between. That's your beginning and that's your end. Or this is your, what, however, you know. The whole world is between the water and the sun. Scroll forward. The first plague against Egypt was what? The water turned into blood, blood. blood. You couldn't drink the water. Okay? Then, we usually were taught that the last plague is killing the firstborns. Okay? Move it aside. Okay? What's that, let's say, pre-last plague? His sun was darkened for three days. Okay? So in the nine plagues, okay, in Exodus, we go step by step, we ruin basically the whole stairway to heaven in the Egypt worldview, okay? God deals with all the things they used to worship, okay? So when Pharaoh, this Pharaoh, not Exodus Pharaoh, or Genesis Pharaoh, when he sees the dream that Nile produces seven cows, good ones, like big, fat, you know, like a good cows, you know. And then, suddenly, it produces seven skinny guys. 
And then those seven skinny guys eat up seven big fat. And the, more, the worst thing is, they didn't change a bit. They are as skinny as they used to be. And he woke up, it's a nightmare, of course, because he knows what's that. If Nile produces seven bad cows, it, it, he doesn't really know exactly what it means, but it cannot be good. And again, it's a night before, not, not nightmare before Christmas, but it, it's a night before birthday. Okay? And he's supposed to have a party. I bet he planned something, and, but now he is in that shaken mood. Now, the second dream is kind of even worse in the sense that it confirms the first one. You have, you know, grain. Okay, seven ears. Okay, I'm not good at drawing, but you got the point. Okay. In our text, it usually says that uh, uh, wind, so we have seven again, seven big, good, decent, fat, I mean, with, you know, ready for harvest, however your translation phrases it, it's not, not important for this moment. And then we have other sevens, and the wind from the east would kill them, would basically fry them, okay? The thing is, it is not from the east. Yes, I mean, east is a good translation and not good enough translation. The point is that in ancient languages, basically in almost everyone, the word for east and the word for sunrise is the same word. So what did kill them? Sun killed them, okay? So what Pharaoh sees is his country, his empire, is in some kind of conflict relationship with two main divinities. Nile is not going to support him. Neither son is going to support him. Okay? And he doesn't know what to do. Okay? So the thing is... <clears throat> Now he's in troubled mind. He is really don't know, doesn't, he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know how to handle that. So he calls for priests and wise men. You know, he calls for people who can, you know, either do some magic, not magic, not necessarily magic in that sense. Uh, people who can do some kind of ritual thing on one hand or give an advice how to act. Okay. In ancient world, there were, sometimes they would overlap, but mostly it were different people, okay? Priests are ritual guys, and uh, it's not nothing bad about ritual, it's just what it is, you know? You know how to please God if you go through particular steps, okay? On the other hand, there are things, there are people who kind of know what's going on, have life experience, Maybe they have some special revelation in the middle of the night or something. So they can advise how to act. Not only please God with the ritual, but how to act and uh, not displease God. Okay? So he calls them in. And uh, none of them are able to explain it. Uh, there are two ways how we can interpret that passage. One of them is they actually figured it out. But none of them was brave enough to say it out loud to the Pharaoh. Because even if you say it, good, even if you say it right, if you are the, the one who brings the bad news, you know what usually happens. <laughs> and the second thing is, two years ago, right before his birthday, Somebody was already beheaded. So they know what might happen if Pharaoh will not be happy with the news. See, it, that's what goes through their mind. Or there is a chance that they really were clueless. I, I don't think so. They were clueless. But, you know, they were not how to... See, my, my take on that is they did not how to phrase it for Pharaoh and still, you know, be alive or be in, keep in their very same position. So, then, cupbearer remembers, ah, 
I know who I can sacrifice. <laughs> and even if he would be, you know, gone, I mean, who cares? He's just a Hebrew slave. Pharaoh. Now I remember the scenes of my days. When I was, when you were, your majesty, when you were displeased with my services, you sent me into the prison. The very famous, you know, five-star prison that we have for no nobility. You know, and I met one guy over there who actually can interpret dreams because we've been through that experience with him. Me and the chief baker. Remember, Pharaoh? The chief baker that you actually, you know, chopped his head off? Huh. So if you will not be happy with the guy, I mean, you're most welcome to do the same. But if you want, you can pull him out of prison and he can interpret dreams. And the thing is, uh, there are two surprising things here. Not like they couldn't happen. They, they definitely did happen. Not, but that's how God works. Because sometimes we do not expect, like, we lost. He asked the cup bearer, when you will get free, remember about me. Bring up my name to Pharaoh. Did cup bearer do it? Nope, he did not. And he probably would not unless God would provide a scary dream for Pharaoh. Okay? So, one thing is... Pharaoh listens and agrees to talk to this guy. Okay, so now Joseph is brought up into the court. He is shaved. Okay, he is washed. I mean, they, they made some kind of makeup for him because we know how they... Seriously, I mean, that's how they dressed up. You know, so he is kind of like one of the guys. And then Joseph basically explains him. But what he says is... He does not really humiliate their gods, but what he does is in his speech, he brings the God who runs everything at the top. He says, God, there are ways how it can be handled and God will provide. So the second thing, surprising for me, is basically Pharaoh repents, and, um, I wouldn't say repent, he, he converts, he agrees that there is a God higher than sun, Ra, and the Nile, and he should be listened to. He should be obeyed. But since nobody knows how to connect with this God, is uh, why won't Joseph be in charge? Okay? So that's an important story. So that's in out of one, two, three stories of birthday, Basically, only one we have happy ending with, and the simple reason is, person, the, the person whose birthday we kind of celebrating, he, he, can, he, he submits himself to the will of God, okay? In these two, we do not have any mentioning of God at all. Therefore, here is a chief baker is killed, here... Even though Herod, the Herod that we have in chapter 14 of Matthew, is a son of Herod the Great, the guy who tried to kill Jesus, you know, at Bethlehem. So uh, his son, even though they were converted into Judaism officially, but since we, in this party, we do not have anything about God. It was nothing that, that uh, God was, I don't know, in a sense, invited to the party. You know, or things be given to him for the birthday. You know, we ended up with the uh, killing of John the Baptist. So, I think it's kind of like an interesting detail that we need to pay attention to. That the birthday parties are um, dangerous things when people kind of close on themselves, concentrate on themselves. Okay, that's why. It's much more, how can I say, given prominent place is, we, we, okay, let me scratch it. Let me rephrase it. We never have a birthday party for Jesus, but we do know that they, he was circumcised. Okay, in Luke chapter 2, it is given a special attention that he was going according to the word of God. He was circumcised. 
And I don't want to say that we need to replace birthday parties with circumcision. It's, but what I'm saying is when we have birthday parties, uh, we kind of need to give um, space or attention to God for the fact that we were brought into this place, you know. So when we will look, I mean, we will, when we will be anthropocentric, you know, centered on human beings, on people, it usually, the concentration people on people, the attention, most attention people on people will lead to death experience, you know, and when people are open to God, it gives life experience, okay? So, any questions or comments? <clears throat>